Mario, it's excellent to have you here. Nice to meet you. All the way from Brazil with yeah. Terça Divri, yeah. uh, Free Tuesday, yeah. uh, rare conservative media in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about the media. Yeah, so, you know, we started a few years ago when the conservative movement in Brazil really picked up any sort of steam, I'd say around 2014. Uh, we didn't have any conservative me uh, media or any conservative movement at all. Uh, Four years ago? Yeah. That Wait a second. Very recent. The president. Right. That's a that's a big shift in four years. Oh, it's big shift. I mean, we had a president in the 1990s is where we first had our socialist president called Fernando Henrique Cardoso. He was a democratic socialist, as um, they like to call it. He's very close to George Soros, actually. Um, and then right in the beginning of the 21st century, we had Lula da Silva, who's more well known. He's in prison now for corruption. He's from the Workers' Party. And then right after him was Dilma Rousseff, also from the Workers' Party. So we had about 20 to 30 years of socialism in Brazil. Obviously, it was a disaster, not only economically, but morally. Um, and people were not only really upset about the economic catastrophe that they brought, but also the complete degradation of moral values. Uh, the streets were unsafe, drugs were coming in. Uh, we were financing all of the communist regimes in Cuba and Venezuela. We we're a big reason why uh, those regimes are you know, standing to this day because of those governments. And people just took a look and said, you know what? Socialism isn't working and we need to change. And, it, and so somehow, four years ago, this conservative movement in Brazil started to form. Right. Why did it take so long? Right, right. So I, this is this is interesting. We'll get back to this deeper. Don't worry. But this is very. This will be very interesting to our uh, folks. No, absolutely. Yeah. So what really happened is the left always used to run all the street activism. So every time there was a street protest, it was always run by the left. And to, in June of 2013, there's a uh, protest in, that started in São Paulo, but w went all, all over Brazil for a free bus pass. The left was promoting everything. All bus passes should be free and all that. And People who were just common folk, who were not ideological, said, you know what, I'm going to go to the street and protest my own, my own cause. And every single Brazilian was tired of corruption, tired of injustice, went to the streets, protested. We're talking about millions and millions of people across cities in Brazil. And they all came together and said, you know what, we're going to change. The left realized, okay, there's something happening here. There's a trigger. Um, and there's, this is the point where Dilma Rousseff goes on st into stadiums in Brazil, gets booed by the crowd. Right. Uh, this is where it all starts. Mm -hmm. And we have a, an intellectual leader here in the United States called Olavo de Carvalho, who's been warning Brazilians about the dangers of socialism and communism for 20, 30 years, but no one gave him any attention. Um, and then people started listening to this guy. And President Bolsonaro was also warning people of the dangers of communism and the history of communism in Brazil in the 60s and 70s and their guerrilla operations, terrorist operations in Brazil. People started to actually do their research and try to learn about these things. And from there onwards, the left just start, started losing the narrative and started losing the street activism that they always, always ran. So, Dersa Divri, tell me a little bit about the genesis of the organization. Alan dos Santos is our founder. Uh, he's been also uh, is one of the students of Olavo de Carvalho. Okay. So Olavo de Carvalho is a, not only an intellectual leader, but he's also a professor. So he's, been, he's a philosopher. So he's the, kind of the, not only the intellectual leader, but the guy who um, does courses and writes books and sells a lot of books on this. So Alan dos Santos is one of his students. So it's on Brazilian conservatism or broader? Right, so, yeah. right, it's, it's about just the history, so a lot of Carvalho t t uh, teaches about the history of communism, the origin, the different intellectual leaders of so socialism, like Antonio Gramsci, all those different guys, right, right. but of course he ties it back into, you know, this is how the global socialist and global communist movement influenced in Brazil, and this is the history of how, you know, KGB operated in Brazil, the history of Chinese communists operating in Brazil, and Alain dos Santos going back to that as one of those students, and really Really, the, one, of the, one of the things that Olavo always stresses to his students is we can't just have an election and win uh, for a conservative. We have to change the culture. We have to fight the culture war, right? And Alando Santos is a guy who said, you know what, my way of doing this is starting this media organization called Terça Livre, and I'm going to combat the massive amount. And what year is this? I, I couldn't pinpoint to you exactly what yeah. year it was. I know it was within the last five years. Okay, got it. Uh, it was when, yeah. at the origin well, of the this, conservative as movement. This all is as this all is unfolding, form. right. Got it. Uh, and it's also because it's a, it's more on the internet, so it's more of a social media, YouTube kind got of it. media, so, you know, it couldn't got be it. around for a long time, the traditional media kind of platforms. But, you know, he, his reason was, you know, our, all of our media is left-wing. 
our newspapers, our main uh, TV channels, they're all left-wing organizations. So his way of contribu contributing and fighting the culture war was starting to study to get this actual real information out to people. So I take it there's been a bit of growth since then? Oh yeah, um, <laughs> there's millions of followers um, yeah. across different social media platforms, YouTube. Um, they're very well known, as um, I was mentioning to you uh, before, Bolsonaro as president invites Tessa Libri as one of his preferred media sources. Well, I was going to say, I'm sure probably played a bit of a role in absolutely. Bolsonaro's election. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, Bolsonaro basically won in Brazil because of social media. Um, he's, you got outspent 25 to 1 by his opponent. So think about if Bolsonaro spent a million dollars, his opponent was spending 25 million. It sounds they like people are just tired of that system. Yeah, but what? Right? It is. Um, <laughs> got outspent. This is one, another one of these stories, right? You know, we have Venezuela, right? We have, you know, Brazil, people fed up and, you know, basically shifting wholesale in the conservative direction. We're still talking about socialism here in America. Not only are we talking about it, it's being fronted as a as a solution, as an alternative. What do you, what do you, do you, do you think we're crazy here in America? No, no, no that's, <laughs> that, that, that's the thing. So um, the, the left is always really good at narrative and they're very good at emotional um, arguments, right? They're not, they're not good at all at logical arguments, but we are, but we don't know how to do that in effect, how to convey that in an effective way. And that's one reason I'm here as well, is to one, warn a lot of Americans of what socialism can bring to you. Because what we hear a lot from the Bernie Sanders, Ocasio-Cortez is, is, oh no, we just want socialism like Sweden. We just want it like Denmark. We don't want the Venezuelan or the Cuban socialism. But that's, but those Scandinavian countries aren't real socialism. The rhetoric that I hear from Bernie Sanders and from Ocasio-Cortez is exactly the rhetoric I hear from the Workers' Party in Brazil. The exact, um, policies and the exact narratives and everything that they're pushing here and the way they go about pushing their, their agenda is precisely identical. That's what shocked me the most is having this international perspective and observing communist and socialist takeovers of Latin America with the same exact, we're here for the poor, we're here for the oppressed, let's divide by class, you're racist, you're homophobic, um, we need to tax more, tax the rich. It's exactly the same rhetoric and the disaster as you can see in Venezuela, Brazil was that close to getting there if, it would, if we didn't have someone like Bolsonaro coming in power. Oh, this is an extremely powerful message to be sharing with, with our audiences. Yeah. Thank you so much Thanks for joining me. Thanks so much me. for your time. Okay. Yeah.